it's close, but sister is more close. <laughs> growing economy. The economy is growing. This is, you should know. Tricycle. That's it. So this is one. I'm, I'm not done yet. And where are the Now, I mean, yeah, this is, uh, if you have heard of uh, an auditing firm, what is an auditing firm called Anderson Consulting, an international auditing firm, they created four questions which are interrelated. Now this is going to be more brain teasing. They related four interrelated questions, applied on British managers, 70% failed to answer them. And applied on primary school children, and 70% passed. <laughs> so it's not difficult, but the creativity is formatted for the adults so that we only think this way, like CCC, we can't think what it is. But children are more creative. They have not been formatted yet. They have not been narrowed into a particular way of understanding. So this is that test. No consultation. I'm going to ask four related questions and you are going to answer. And you will see, it's part of, uh, it's, are you professional, it says, in that actually it's, are you a, a leader and manager as well. Okay. Question number one. <laughs> okay. How many people have seen this before? How many people have seen this before? You've seen. So if you have, anybody else has seen this? Anybody? No. So okay. So brother Raza, you are switched off. Okay. You are switched off for this test. Okay. Tell me, how do you put a giraffe into the fridge? Ah, oh, I can see, but the father, sister Fatima is killing. No killer allowed. No killer allowed. Sister Fatima was saying. <laughs> so no knife allowed. Okay. Yeah. That is an assumption. No, like even if you cut it. Yes. It's still too big. Oh, if you cut it, it's still too big. You know what's happening? We are making assumption that the fridge is the normal home fridge. I didn't say that, you made the assumption. So we make a lot of assumptions like that and limit our ability to think and act. This is why it is important for us to bring, break free from the limitations we have imposed upon ourselves. It's a kind of paradigm shift we need. Okay? So, I have seen an abattoir's big fridge. Where? Because I worked in, you know, the slaughterhouses in Makkah. I worked there because IDB officers are all engaged to supervise the laborers engaged, uh, imported 20,000 from abroad to run five slaughterhouses. So I've seen big, so sort of maybe something like 200 to 300 lambs in the uh, fridge. Sheep, sheep in the fridge. So I didn't say the size is small. You made the assumption. So the answer is, <laughs> open the door, put the giraffe in, close the door, three steps. I said, how? And the answer didn't come because of the limitation that the meat is small and the animal free. <coughs> okay. Now, next question. The same fridge, the zip, the <coughs> giraffe is in there, and you want to put elephant in there. What how is the question again? What are the steps? You open the fridge. Take out the jar and then put it in the other hand. Close the door. Wonderful. Four steps. Open the fridge, 
take the giraffe out, put the elephant in, close the door. The how is answered correctly. Okay, let's see. This is what you see how big the fridge is and, and <laughs> is can you share anyway? The Lion King is hosting an animal conference of land and sea. And all animals are there except one. Who is missing? Who is missing? Elephant. Who is missing? Elephant. Elephant. <laughs> this is a smart group of people. <laughs> Most places I go to, they forget that the elephant is there. They say the fox or the lion who called the meeting. Yes, the elephant is there. Most people, because it's related question, remember? I said related questions. And most places I go to and test this, they fail. Because they forget. Okay, this is the answer. This tests your memory. So in leadership and management, and in, in any professional work, or even working at home, we need to challenge our assumptions to see if there is evidence for the limiting assumptions that we have. Okay, now the three, three questions out, four questions. It says that you still have a chance. This is nicely prepared. Huh? There is no bridge or boat to cross this, this water and you have to swim across. How do you do it? Right on the right. Hmm? Right on crocodile. Oh! The crocodile will not let you go. Okay. The okay. Okay. Okay, let's see. The sister has got one sister told me she has got the right answer. Okay, tell me. Because they are at the party. They are in the meeting. You see, you already forgot. They are all in the meeting except the elephant. What's worrying you? Unless you can't swim. <laughs> see, all the crocodiles are attending the animal conference. After all, the king has called. You don't want to be in trouble with the king. Okay. This is 90% professionals fail. I said 70%. Okay. Now. Now let's go into, this is, rain teasing is over. Now let's go into some community development related matter. Community development is a kind of personality, a kind of action that you take for the sake of Allah. Let me relate this community development to uh, a concept that's really, <coughs> there are four forces in each one of us. Four forces. You have, you have a uh, soul, okay, you have body, you have mind, and you have heart. Okay? So four, and they, according to uh, Quran, these two fight. This is Ruh, and this is Nafs. And you have Nafs Ammar Ma'inna, three outcomes of that conflict. Okay? And the conflict, uh, and the winner of the conflict, this is the control room of our life. Body and heart control, they control our lives, what we do. So think about, think about mind as steering and heart as engine. The winner becomes the driver of this car, my life car. So if we support the rule to win, then the rule will take our life in the right direction. Now,
Dr. Stephen Covey, the seven habits of highly effective people person say, to coordinate, you need L, 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 L for them to synchronize themselves and be highly successful as leader. Okay. So what what the what L hard ones, which is the easiest to ask? What hard ones? Love. Love, give and take love. And varieties of love. Husband, wife, love, parent, children, love, friends, love and brothers and sisters, siblings. So that's love. How about mine? What L mine wants? Logic. Yeah? Logic. It's close. The actual word used is learn. Logic is the process through which we make sense. And body wants what L? When it's hungry, it says I want food. When it's thirsty, it wants water. When it's tired, it wants rest. It wants to live. It wants to live. Now all these, this is the special one. And that's related to this. Okay? What L is the soul, the rule? See? What would be the word the soul is seeking without a reward? The word is So let's see a legacy, a story, a real story in America okay, of how community development mindset should be, the paradigm should be, the foundation of human and humanity should be. It's called a glass of milk. How a glass of milk changed. Just read because I don't want, I don't want to read what you can. The precursor of the community development theory is actual practice that creates community development. real story. 
This is Allah's grand design. We do something, what she said, for the law. You don't take money. You just peace. Allah. Oh. So, this is the story. This is the response. So if we do for Allah, Allah will have mysterious ways of doing something more than that. Can you see the spirit of community development here? And the spirituality inspired community development here. Okay. There are some lessons here. Okay. Now we go into the real meat. I want to create conditions by brain teasing and then bringing in something very special. This has, uh, many times, it brought tears to my eyes because it's really what Muslims should do. This is how a Muslim should behave. Both of them behave well. This is good. Yes, this is good. I'm going to first say uh, some things, but before then, do you have any uh, thoughts and feelings to share? on the story because this is the paradigm, the mindset for Islamic community development to please Allah in the way of Rasulullah Remember, the Prophet was not Prophet officially then. What can you say in terms of his status recognized by his society before be called for the Shahada. What would you say was his status in society, recognized by the society? Al Amin al Sadiq, a trustworthy and the truth. So even though when he even though Abu Jahl Abu Lahab was sworn enemy, none of them said he was not trustworthy. None of them could say he was a liar. They said he was a magician, but not a liar. Do we have that status? Can we establish our own personality that society will say this man or woman will not lie and is trustworthy? That was already established by him before he became officially prophet. So when the message came, they could not say you are lying. They knew he was not. This is one issue. What else he achieved during his early period? And this, is related, this relates to us doing something in society. What else? Yeah? What else did he do? He was uh, helpful, helpful for Zul? Yes. This is the NGO that he was involved in. He was organizing, helping the helpless, helping the distressed. This NGO called Hateful Fuzul. Okay. So that's another thing. He was already in the service of humanity in his society before he became officially instructed to do so. Another piece, there's a leadership issue. Also. Leadership issue, anything, conflict management leadership. Conflict leadership. Yes, I was. See, you have to understand. Before becoming prophet, he was already recognized as a community leader because of his character, because of his truthfulness, because of his piety, because of his morality, because of his integrity, and because of his intelligence and wisdom. So he was. He was recognized, they accepted, all of them accepted, the dispute was resolved by simple action. So he was wise, but he was recognized leader. 
Okay, this is all Allah's design. Okay, now these are the contents. Have a look at the contents. I usually start most of my presentations with quotations. Okay, definitions, principles, then Islamic community development and why community development is important. Okay. Quotation one. Anybody knows the Arabic? Surah ar -Rab. Can you see all professional topics? Uh, by the way, by an Indian brother in Jeddah uh, pressed me to record some professional topics in Quran and Sunnah references. So you will find about 40 of them in YouTube. If you put my name uh, there uh, and give me feedback about how I can do better in recording next time because there are others who are asking for recording. This is in Allah This is the translation. Okay? This is from Bukhari. So, Islamic community development requires sadaqa mindset. <coughs> Another. <coughs> so all those who are in whatever kind of leadership positions, note this one because Allah is warning the leaders. Okay. Now, look at that. Mother Teresa is one of the inspiring characters who have done wonderful community development work. And she did something that most Muslims would be unable to do. She went to the shanty towns, picked up the children with murder, whatever it is, she didn't care. She showed love beyond belief. So that's why Allah has honored her. So this is what she says. At least I can create something that will have removed this for example. This is Stephen Covey. Very interesting for communities where it's not one race and one religion. It's actually It's for introduction, not <laughs> superiority or inferior inferiority. There's a glove there. Then <coughs> superiority depends on what? The last part of that verse that I just read. Actual superiority in society is not degree or family or the looks or the position we hold in the Akrama in the Allah by taqwa. By taqwa. If I have time and you ask me, I have actually made a matrix of taqwa so that we can pinpoint what it means. General taqwa, everybody knows. But I've been working on graphic illustration, matrix information, collecting together. <coughs> this is <coughs> because the motherhood is the first school a child goes to. So, Making mother educated in Islam and general, both. Only one will, will not be uh, effective. Happiness is not in getting but giving. I have a lecture from an American uh, sister who said that money can buy happiness. How? By giving the money. By giving! to make somebody else's need met. Not mine. By giving money to those who in, in, are in need, then you can buy happiness with money. This is wonderful. 
let me let me tell you the story of uh, Greg Mortensen. This was a, a man who was uh, he wrote this book, Three Cups of Tea. A anybody know? Anybody knows about this story? You know. Okay, this man is an American man, and he's really a great example of community development achievement. This man went on, uh, he was a mountain climber. He was not, he was never uh, near community development business or social development business. So he went on mountain climbing in Pakistan and got injured and was rescued by the poor villagers in Pakistan. And he was so impressed because they had very little to offer him, but they offered him three cups of tea and took care of him. It really changed his entire life. And he saw children going around, no schooling. So he said, what happened? Why the children are not going to school? They said, there's no school here. So he said, they are such nice people. I will do whatever I can to build a school for them. He went back to America. He asked his friends and relatives and mobilized money to build the school there. He himself went, he saw it built, and he saw he started the uh, school with these children. But because of the village people's treatment and the children's potential he saw, he was energized and inspired. And over a period of three years, he built 52 schools. Think about that. This is a legacy of real devotion to help others. This is the motto of Islam that Muslims have forgotten. This is Islam in action. So look at what he's saying. This book is available, I believe, a uh, PDF you can download. See, the origin is Latin word. So community development is a process to develop Multi-dimensional development, economic development, social development, family development, individual development, political development, all those developments put together, the process will make it possible. So this is it. And see this. Work live together, harmoniously making free choices based on how they collectively wish their needs to be met in a just and equitable society. There's a lot of things there. Justice, equality, uh, you will see. Three things in, in community development, foundation of community development, if you like. There are problems to solve. There are prospects, meaning negative to be removed, positive to be created, and participate in the affairs of the collective life. Like election is part of it. <coughs> Policy making is part of it. So these three I use. I also use 3M on community development leadership. Mobilize, motivate, and move. There are some more uh, of these. Uh, my, my cooked items will come, inshallah. Now I'm going to give you something to do. And what I'm suggesting uh, three groups of brothers just make a round and three groups of sisters make a circle and discuss community development project that you know about share. So this is one thing to do. Second thing to do is you select one to share. Maybe if we have time we will share more. What needs 
that a, one particular project of the projects that you've shared, this project was set up to meet what needs? What are the needs? How did they find out? We'll talk about community needs assessment. So you just don't have suddenly have an idea, oh, I think we should do this. There must be some basis, some justification, some evidence that it's needed. So we'll talk about that. But I want you, whatever project you know, including this is a project, whatever project you know, talk about how the project was started. What, what fueled, what inspired, what encouraged, motivated the project for the project to come. And some brothers I know have two, two mosques uh, is involved in to develop after having done one. And you identify the strengths and weaknesses of the project. So you share one project, maybe two, but first you share individually. So this one will come at last. So what you do is one and two, these two you discuss on the projects that you know or you've been involved in. Okay? So make groups, circles, and how long do you need? What time is Asad? What time is Asad? Long way. 4.15. 4.15. Jamaat is 4.50. 4.15. 50. 50. So we can have the exercise and we can have a feedback too. Okay? So you will have, how long do you need? For each group, and so there will be six groups, and six groups, at least six projects we want to know. So that this is the time for me to learn. This is how I learn. So we are going to tease out more information about it. Okay? So you discuss, everyone will share something from her or his experience of a project that she was involved in or has observed, has knowledge about. Okay? Everyone will share something. And then, after discussing the, uh, these three, then you come and decide, we will discuss this project to share. Because we can't discuss all the projects, okay? So if you take half an hour, because everyone needs to discuss it, and we'll share before prayer your feedback, your particular project. So we'll have, so let's come back at uh, five to four, maybe, yeah. That's fine, you just listen to the others. If you don't have, have any experience or observation or knowledge about any particular project that you've seen or been involved in, you learn from others. So you go to other groups so that you can share it up. In any case, there are sisters. So among sisters who have some experience of okay, they want any other sister, any project can be small or big. Project means something that for the community they must pass on a group, a club, a learning. What? Yeah, you can discuss. Yeah. But in that, you need to identify who you and how would you identify. Okay, can you make three groups of Let's make three groups. Yeah, three groups.